Welcome to my Just Jenny podcast. Today's guest is Nicole Jacques. And if you follow her Instagram feed, pay close attention because before she was on, I created a story in my head that um, Nicole was from Paris. And this is just because she had said in one video that she was Parisian and I didn't either see the entire video or I don't know. But welcome to my podcast, Nicole. You are not Parisian, though I was kind of excited that maybe you were. I was going to be like, I spent a semester abroad and I love the French. Um, but yeah, no, you just are an American in the United States of America, like every one of us. Yes, ma'am. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You're a wife. You're a mom. You have taught yourself how to cook. You are an entertainer. So I guess you like people in your home. You call yourself a holistic mompreneur. I wanted to talk to you because I, I saw these videos that you had with all these kind of home hacks. And like my sister and I, we make a lot of lists. We make a lot of like what you need to buy, um, fun stuff, but we don't know how to cut bell peppers the right way. Or even <laughs> like I cut pineapple and I butcher it. I don't do it well. <laughs> I, um, you seem to have tips for everything, garbage cans and placemats and coffee and using vinegar. Yeah. And so I love this because I look at you and I'm like, this is a mom who looks like she's totally well put together. So like, what is the story? <laughs> How are you managed to be so put together? Like, so you had a bathing suit the other day and I'm like, she, how does yeah. this person have everything it seems together and you're only 36 years old like i'm 53 and i am just at the point where i care very little about much of everything which is a gift at 36 totally. i was way neurotic so how have you kind of figured this all out that you can do all these things and you don't seem to be emotionally compromised by any of it yeah so i first of all i want to know all your tips uh, cause you look amazing and like uh, your skin tone. I'm like looking at you going, yes, girl, give me the tips to that. Zoom I has, Zoom has a great filter. <laughs> and then I use, I use a zoom filter and I use thrive cosmetics. A lot of the brand thrive cosmetics. I started with just like eyeliner and their mascara and now concealer and concealer and their foundation. And then I use something called like winky or winks for my under eye mm. concealer. And then I use, I use like three different eyeshadow sticks from thrive at once i have a whole like system it takes hours and months Amazing. to look well it's you working know, keep it going yeah, girl. thanks um i i kind of come from the same i'm cut from a similar cloth to you where at 36 i'm doing my own life and i spent the past three years kind of weeding out the fat and whether that be yeah from a holistic standpoint of like what I'm, I really looked at consumption, right? So like consumption of media, consumption of my diet, consumption of the people that I sat down wow. at a table and hosted. Definitely. And I kind of came into my own and found this strength inside me to say, like, this is me. And I talk about how I talk a lot of my stories about there is no perfect person. So my videos may look like, Hey, look, she's got it all put together. But in actuality, Right now I'm in like fuzzy slippers and like my tea needed to be reheated before this podcast. Like it's, I've chipped a nail. It's not all there. And uh, we are Im imperfect humans all yeah. just trying to find our way. So I try to show up to my stories super authentically and say like, my mascara is smeared. Like I came on yesterday and I was like, I went to the pool and all these girls are in these like little bikinis and they look so great. But like, it made me feel insecure. I'm a human. I got real feelings, real emotions. I don't have it all put together. Uh, you know, and it, we're, it's so funny. we're just trying. <laughs> For sure. But seeing like your birthday pictures, because you just turned 36. And so um, Nicole has like over 100,000 followers on uh, TikTok and over 120, 150,000 followers on Instagram. I didn't get the exact number, but I know you have you've many followers on both of the platforms, which is great because with all the hoopla surrounding TikTok, it's good that you're sort of covered on, on Instagram. But in watching your stories and watching your videos from your birthday and then the one piece bathing suit you had on the other day, 
I, that was when I looked and I was like, oh my God, she's just, she's so at ease. Like, look at her in her bathing suit. Like, oh my, and you're an adorable girl. I mean, whatever. I don't look at, like, I, I don't want anyone to listen, think that I'm saying you're at ease and you have a reason not to be. No, you're an adorable, beautiful, young looking girl, but at every size, I'm never comfortable in my, like my body, I'm just never comfortable. So like sure. seeing you in your bathing suit, I was like, oh, look at her. She's so chill and at ease. And so to hear you say that even like that, that then you go to the pool and you're a little bit uneasy because there are girls that are, that are less clothed than you. And somehow you don't feel like you're measuring up is interesting to me. Yeah, I think that that's a natural, common, socially taught to us reaction, right? And yeah. we're coming into spring break and we're coming into summer and like, this is top of mind. And I don't have boobs like that. I've breastfed my kids and I don't, like my thighs touch. Like to, I'm duh. okay with that, right? Yeah. And people are like, oh, you're so petite. Like, how can you talk about that? You're not this size. And I'm like, at any size, it's okay to feel insecure. And it's okay to recognize yeah. it and then bring it back to the core which was, Nicole, why are you at the pool? You're at the pool to entertain, to be looked at? No, you're at the pool to play with your kids. Get in the pool. We made friends. We played with the basketball hoop. I was soaking mm -hmm. wet. My mascara was smeared. And I was like, that was the best day ever. You have to bring it back to your core. And I spent a lot of my time doing that. But with that, I want my kitchen and my house to run efficiently. I yeah. want to find joy in it. I don't want to yeah. feel like I'm doing chores. And I yep. want the easiest, cleanest, fastest, cheapest way to do it. And that's what the platform really is about. And as it's grown, I've, I've been on Instagram for just over a year and a half. That's and fast. Yeah. And so it's been very, there's been a huge learning curve and I've had many a failure and I've had a many, many nights thinking, why am I doing this? Or what is the purpose? But you get those messages from people where they see themselves in you and you can connect. And that's really what social media is about. You think we lack that vision sometimes. So I always talk about like, come back to your core. Why are you even doing what you're doing? Because yeah. all the outside is noise. And if you can quiet that noise, sometimes it's very difficult to do, but if you can do it, wow, like you, you'll be back on your path and set straight and you yeah. know, be content, happy. I, so I just had an experience where I was, um, I was at the manicure store because girl needs a manicure. And oh. I was, I was getting my nails done or actually I was getting my toes done. Girl needed a pedicure and somebody came in and introduced herself to me. We've never met before and she's a listener or follower or whatever. And she started telling me just some of the like really deepest, most painful stuff. And she said, I just feel like, I just feel like I know you'll get it. I just feel like I know you'll get it because I've listened to you and I know the stuff you've been through and I feel like few people get it. I know you'll get it. And yes, I got it. And I feel for her and she's in extraordinary pain and in a really tough spot. Mm -hmm. But I, but I thought to myself, like you were just saying, that's the reason to show up. Like my whole thing is I, it's not about how many people listen or how many people follow. It's about the right. one person who listens and feels less alone because that is the very point. I, I Nobody should ever feel like they're the only one suffering. Most of us feel crappy much of the time. So I, I just, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like you understand your being there is almost like you're a conduit to somebody else's like finding their way or finding their efficiency or finding their way to find joy and purpose in what they're doing at home. It's so cool when you try one of the hacks and you're like, oh my gosh, that worked. That worked, yeah. How did yeah, that yeah, yeah. work? And then you're so, like, oh, yeah. I did it too. And I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, I learned a lot of these from my grandmother. She, I come from a long line of very strong will. Well, so women. this is what I want to know. I want to know how this started. Yeah. So you have, you have little kids. Yeah. And so growing up, were you a do-it-yourself kind of kid? Were you crafty? And then yeah. did you go to school? Like, how did you wind up being yeah. this mother in that house? Okay, so I came from a long line of strong women. My grandmother on my mom's side is named Ruth. You'll hear me talk about her frequently. My and grandmother on she... my dad's side was named Ruth. My niece is named Ruth. And my um, daughter is named Raquel, both after her. Okay, I love it. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's Ruthie just one of those. Anytime niece. you meet a Ruth yeah. or someone else knows a Ruth, yeah. I'm like, we're love Ruthie. This is mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So... 
my grandmother grew up in the South. She was married, arranged at a very young age. She had children. They separated. She married my grandfather, whom they were married for over 60 years. And she was just strong-willed and an entrepreneur herself. And she had my mom. My mom was like, the hostess with the mostest. I grew up in, you know, the East Coast in New York and watched her host so many parties. So I kind of grew up in this atmosphere of bring people together around food, show them you love them by making them a meal. The kitchen is a joyful place where you're going to create what nourishes not only your body, but also your families and your friends and the people that you love. So I was kind of always washed in that from my grandmother and my mom. But my grandmother knew all of these hacks because she had to figure it out herself. You know, she was married when she was 14. Oh, wow. Um, and so very That's young. That's real young. Yeah. 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 And she has a crazy story, but like she had to learn it herself. There was no school for her to learn all of this. So mm-hmm. she'd like clean shoes with like a potato. And I was like, what are you doing? You know, there's things you can buy for that. And she's like, nothing's better than the potato. I started watching her and I was like, this looks better, more efficient. I always have a potato. potato you know, works, like, right. Yeah. Like, like how, what, what am I yeah. doing? I'm complicating yeah. my life. Why am I yeah. doing that? Just buying another product. I don't know what's in it, all that crap. So what does I, a, what does a potato clean? A lot of things. I have a reel on all the things you can clean with a potato, your mirrors and glass, your shoes, you can clean your cast iron with it, with salt. I'm not kidding. The potato, the spud, I love French fries. It is my weakness. My potato chip obsession is strong, but I will tell you the potato does so much more than just feed you. So if you take a cast iron pan, which I know needs to be oiled and salted and stuff, yes. and we're not supposed to use soap with a cast iron pan. So you take a potato, you put salt on the pan and you rub it like you scrub it with the potato rather than something else to scrub it. You got it. So you take a potato, you cut it in half, and then you pour salt in your cast iron and you scrub it with the potato like a sponge and then just rinse and it'll clean what it needs and it'll still keep everything intact. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah starch from a potato can do a lot of great things. And the mirror is wild because it's also a fog protectant. Yeah. So after you clean it, like you spritz water on it and just wipe it with half of potato. And then like the next morning you'll get out of the shower and be like, why isn't it fogging? And it's the starch and the potato reacts with it and keeps it fog free. Okay. I love that. What will clean the pleather? I got ink on my white pleather chair in my office. So, um, at rubbing alcohol, like I okay, take a little alcohol okay. and yeah, just I take tried, a little Q-tip yeah. and it'll come out. I tried a magic eraser and I tried a wet ones thinking the wet ones would do it, but the wet ones yeah. didn't work and the magic eraser didn't work. So you're saying just yeah. full alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Just isopropyl alcohol that. will take out okay. a lot. It actually works on suede very well too. So yeah, so I learned a lot of it from my grandmother. A lot of my recipes are from hers and then I've modified it. And what I've learned is I've become like kind of this walking modern home economics class where I know a little about a lot of different topics and how to do it around your home. And so that's kind of where the holistic home comes into play. Um, But take me to like high school and (laughs) did you go to college? Like how we ended up here doing this because yeah yeah, because a lot of people have have interesting roads to work like some people go to high school go to college and then they leave college and they're done and they do a i don't know they get whatever job they get other people go to graduate school other it's all different so but how do you wind up not just like you're it's a very specific kind of influencing like it's hacks and it's home hacks it's mom hacks it's yeah how do you so i I graduated high school. I went out to college. I thought I was going to be a nurse. I always wanted to be caregiver. My whole world was around that and quickly realized this is not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I graduated with a degree in communications business and journalism. So I've always been drawn to like the writing. I've always have been a very creative child. Imaginative play was always my thing. I'm still like that today. That's so so cool. It's my side of the brain that works. I have a whole nother thing with numbers where they just are look foreign to me, but you give me anything with art, crap, whatever science. I can even do that. Numbers. No, I married someone in finance for that. So, so (laughs) I, I graduated college and I was in public relations and marketing for healthcare companies, which was a good blend of everything I wanted. 
and worked in San Francisco for years and then moved up to Oregon for my husband, um, whom I've known since I was 18. Wow. And yeah, it's crazy. And we were on and off through all of that time, moved up to Oregon and I got married and became a mom and quickly realized my career didn't matter as much as being a mom did. So we made the sacrifices we needed and I became a stay-at-home mom seven years ago. And then just a year and a half ago, I was on a beach trip with some girlfriends and they're like, you need to share this. Like not just in our town or with your friends, like you should be sharing this on social media. And I was like- What was, what sharing what though? So you're away with your friends and then they just are saying like you as a person, cause they know- <laughs> yeah. Like they were like, like the you're cooking. Town. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, you're cooking. I do like cookbook group. I, I'm very into like the food scene. And they were like, you should be doing it around your food. But like you, you know, I'm washing dishes at the beach house and I'm doing all these different things. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, this is how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people cook. Not that there's not room yeah. for everybody. There is. True. But I really like the hacks. I like cooking too. By the way, not I don't like to cook. I like to watch cooking is what I mean when I say I like <laughs> cooking too. Nah, don't come for me to get the recipe. Mm -mm, that's yeah, not, yeah. you don't want, I make smoothie. <laughs> like I made a smoothie the past couple of days and I'm so proud of myself. And I really, really like this smoothie because normally my smoothies involve like far too many ingredients and also far too many calories and also just junky. <laughs> but like I found kefir lately to be quite delightful. And so I like the nutritional breakdown that it has like 12 grams of protein for 140 calories and whatever. So I've been putting like kefir, frozen blueberries, a handful of almonds, a tablespoon of honey and, um, and good cultured cottage cheese. So it's like a very, very, very high protein smoothie without protein powder. And it's delicious and i think i have started something revolutionary because of the almonds because <laughs> it's not peanut butter and it's not almond yeah. butter throw it all in my blender but yeah but that's the extent of it so like but i love to watch cooking but i really love to watch the the other like the potato thing is just that to me is worth everything yeah so i think it's just it became a thing and i would i'd have a friend be like hey what are you using for laundry detergent i'm like oh i just make my own or I, I had, um, three years ago, I kind of went on a journey through what was in my home and what might be causing like rashes for my kids. Or as a mom, you kind of look at all ingredients. And so yeah. there is a good blend of non-toxic options on my page as well. And a lot of that yes. comes from the fact that, um, last May I was like very raspy in my voice and I actually ended up choking eating a salad out that school. And uh, food was stuck in my esophagus for 12 hours. They had to scope it. And I left that vacation finding out I had an autoimmune disorder. And I was like shook. I was shocked. I, I don't talk about it a lot on my page. This is kind of my first time going through it with anybody. But I realized like there were things that were aggravating my body. And I really had to get to the core of that. And so I went on a deeper journey than just for my children, but also myself. And so now what's funny is I open up my grandma's recipe books. You know, she has uh, cleaning ones and she has ones for food, which I think is super cool in her handwriting. Oh. And a lot of what she used to use back then to clean her home is clean. It, it's not, there's no toxins. There's no like what Tide is nowadays, you know? So my grandmother kind of gave me this gift and this book of cleaning and now I share it on my page. So it's all okay. comes full circle. Okay. Go back to the esophagus because this is a, cause yeah. my sister once felt like she had a chicken bone stuck in her throat and we went to the emergency room and they were like, you need a Valium because there is no chicken bone. You think it's there and it ain't. So how did you know that something was actually lodged in your esophagus? Cause when, Usually when we choke, it goes down the windpipe rather than the esophagus. Yes. So I could like kind of feel it, you know, as I'm choking, I kind of just like, I moved yeah. my body upside down and it kind of came up and then I swallowed and it, I could feel it. It was like stuck right here. Wow. And I was like, something is stuck. I don't know. I mean, you're in pure panic because it's yeah. in a very sensitive area and you're like, can it still go over my windpipe? Am I in danger? Who knows? And I was like, it's not clearing. We're like Googling, you know, it's like what you do. 
Googling like it's food stuck in throat. And so I was like drinking Coke. There's all things that are supposed to dislodge it. Nothing was working. And so after that, I was like, we're going to the emergency room. And they were like, oh yeah, we can see it on the x-ray. Like you totally have something stuck in your throat and you know, the rest of it ensued. So she probably did have a chicken bone stuck in her throat. And, and they didn't tell did you, half, yeah. But- they didn't tell you to drink something viscous. They didn't say like, these are the ways to move it. I can't believe they had to actually scope you. Yeah, it was it was a lot. And after that, I was just on a whole new journey. I was like, this is my body telling me to stop, slow down, take another look at things. Like what's going on? Um, and did and then, they, you know, you're on a journey, yeah. a health journey. But, but did they explain what the autoimmune syndrome was that would cause this kind of? Yeah. So it's called EOE and it's an esophagus. Basically how people Got have it. allergies in their sinuses, yep. yours is in your esophagus. Esophagus. Yep. Got it. And you have to work through like different diets. And I've seen multiple, uh, you know, go down to Stanford University. I mean, I've gone through the gamut and really what it comes down to is you have to look at your life in every compartment, right? Like, and that's how I view the home. It's not just that our kitchen is like where we cook, right? It's also where we create memories around food. It's not like our, you kind of have to look at it in mental, spiritual. Ah. There's all components that make a home really what it is. Not just the people living inside of it or how clean you keep it or if you host the best parties. They're all interconnected. Um, And so my health journey kind of taught me that. And now I kind of apply it to homemaking as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, health, health scares like that. They just, they kind of set you right on the path you need to be on, I think, like often. Yeah, what's important, right? What's important? Yeah. Where do you want your time spent, you know? Yeah. Also with kids, it's like, I I remember as a kid thinking like I had to be alive for my parents in a sense, like you have to be here for your, but once I had babies, it was a whole different thing. Like I, I have to be alive for them. I mean, they're grown ups now, but I have to be alive for them. Like it's a, that's what I that's just what I think about. Like I have to be here for, for somebody else in a sense. So let's talk about some of the, the cleaning hacks. Cause I do love a clean space. I'm not the best organizer. I do like things crazy clean. So do you use a Swiffer for dust or do you have a dust kind of remedy? So my best remedy is on my page, but I love to just put in, I kind of like make my coconut oil is a great repellent by the way, for dust. So little coconut oil, you drops, and then in water. Most cleaning supplies, by the way, are water-based. Water is going to clean a lot of it for you. Okay. And I just kind of spritz it on a microfiber cloth and then wipe it down. But if you have like another cleaning hack, if you have high shelves that you kind of just yeah. use for decor somewhere, put newspaper down on top of it or like magazines. And then you just take that down and recycle it every month. And that's your dusting. You're literally just replacing paper instead of dusting, uh, um, which yeah. is so easy and convenient if you have those kinds of, I'm looking at one here at my yeah. uh, Airbnb, but so that's a good one. You can use, uh, I don't use a Swiffer. I feel like that just at, they have fragrances and other things in them, but a microfiber cloth goes a long way for cleaning most things. Okay. Okay. What about grout? How do you handle like mm. shower grout? So grout is complicated. Baking so soda complicated. Is, it's so complicated. <laughs> and know. then after you clean it, you're supposed yeah. to seal it, which oh, is please. like nobody wrote the rule book, right? Like no. where's the rule book mm-hmm. on this thing? So for grout for me, I have a few on my feed. It depends what type of grout you have, but I usually just apply a baking soda paste and then just lodge it with um, warm water. I let it set for an hour or so, and it usually will kill everything that I need. But if you need an extra little ump, you can use vinegar because it'll, if you've got mold spores in it, it'll kill the mold spores. And so you don't have to worry about those regenerating and growing or the staining from them. So there's Uh, multiple, multiple ways you can tackle things. So interesting. Yeah. Vinegar is a thing that I hear all the time that people use, but I just, and I guess vinegar might be in some of the quote unquote clean cleaning products. Like I'll use Method or I'll use like those brands, but I don't know. I feel like does it get as clean as Windex? So my recommendation is to use hydrogen peroxide. Like go take hydrogen peroxide to your grout and you'll be like, wow, that works so well. Um, a little Dawn dish soap and hydrogen peroxide can go a long way for fixing most things in your house. And you yeah. don't have to worry about like the fumes from Windex, what can come along with it. 
the potato works good on windows. I actually use for hard, <laughs> for hard, for hard, I love a potato for hard no. um, water stains on your shower glass. Just take like dish soap, water yeah. and a lemon, cut a lemon in half and it'll clean it. It is brand new. That's amazing. I, I like a lemon in the microwave. The smelly microwave is the bane of my existence. And it doesn't even have to be like, I, I don't make it like I'll take an Amy's frozen burrito <laughs> and make it in my microwave. And usually I make it in the air fryer and the air fryer doesn't retain the scent the way the microwave retains a scent. And maybe it's because I wash the air fryer more thoroughly, I guess. But like, I swear you put anything in that damn mi microwave and the smell just does not go away and I'll leave it open to try to just like yeah. air it out. But there has to be another way to get a microwave to smell. I've, I've put cinnamon in a cup with water inside the microwave to boil that. Is there a, a great cure for the microwave ill? If you love coffee, just heat up a cup of coffee. It'll capture it all and clean it. Now to clean it, like to just make it smell better, I just put in a cup of coffee or some coffee beans okay. for like 30 seconds and that'll do it. The other, the way I clean it though is, you know, cut a lemon, put it in water. If you don't like vinegar, just water and lemons. But if you do like the vinegar, like I make scented vinegar, so I can't even smell it after that. It smells like oh, orange wow. grove. Yeah. yeah, it's super easy. And so I do that with the lemon turn it on for 30 seconds to a minute and then everything just falls off of it and it smells so good. Smells yeah. And so then you good. wipe it down with a paper towel or oh, sorry, yeah. a microfiber, whatever, either. And will you use so paper well. towel? Yeah. Will you use paper I do. towel? Okay. I do use paper towel for a handful of things, especially if I know it's a sensitive, mm -hmm. like there's a few things. A lot of the time it's for hand washing in our house. Paper towels are typically used for hand washing. I, there's something OCD in me that like can't think about like both of my kids' hands after school being on the same towel that mine's on. That. I don't know. Oh no, I get that. I don't think that's straight. It just feels <laughs> like it's cleaner than the towel that's been on the rack. It just does. Yeah, it just it does. Just, and I know it's not eco-friendly. It's the one thing I compromise, which okay. is what I talk about. You can't do it all. Like you physically can't do it all. You cannot be a hundred percent of anything. So yeah. do what's going to work best for you and causes less stress and is better for your there was, overall um, being. I was I was listening to Dr. Peter Atia on I think it was Huberman Lab. There's like a three hour podcast. I'm supposed to have Dr. Atia on this podcast. It will not be three hours of conversation. But I was <laughs> I was and he's got this new book and so and I really like him a lot. And I'm listening to him and Dr. Huberman talk about like the four horsemen of death and like the things that kill you. And they're talking about um, heart disease and blood pressure and lung stuff. And and then they they start talking about how the real issue isn't, I mean, smoking's horrible and smoking is really bad for you and don't smoke. But then they're like, but you know, the other real problem is the actual pollution in the air. And it's like, at some point, like, I, what do we, I, we have to live. So I understand, yes. I don't like the pollution either. And I'm not looking to add to the pollution. Of True. course not. And I think this was their point too. Like there's, you do the best that you can. So don't smoke because we already have to contend with pollution or don't kind of do the stuff you don't need to do because you already have to deal with the other things. So like, yeah, paper towel is fine. Like it's fine. If it's going to make you feel like you're avoiding MRSA in your house, then great. Exactly. And yeah. it's something that will take stress off of me. And sometimes it's just that oh. it's being able to do something that I know just takes like the pressure off my shoulders. So yes. I can be yes. a more content and available person for the people that need me most. Nicole Jack, do you have any pets? I do. I have a 14 year old dachshund. Her name's Bella. Oh, so cute. Okay. Pet, pet stains. We had a pet stain, uh, Bonanza the other day we had middle of the night poop explosion on carpet it was a nightmare now i did ninja the fuck out of it and i think i did a good job because nobody has sniffed it again so i think good. i did a good job i get i'm shocked actually i'm actually shocked because pee stains no matter what i do they end up sniffing again they don't always pee on it but they will sniff i don't know how i was able to to fix this but what do you do when there's a carpet problem like that so I use my DIY stain remover and I use it on everything. I use it on clothes. I use it on 
like you name it, but for pet odor and accidents, I love it. It's hydro a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. So you'll need like an amber color or just the bottle. You can buy tops on Amazon to just stick on your hydrogen peroxide bottle, by the way. And yep. Dawn, blue, blue Dawn dish soap yeah. and water. And I shake it up and I spray it on. I leave it for, I don't know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And then I just scrub it. Everything comes out of it. I'll pre-treat stains baseball, you name it, anything on clothing, you just spray it, put it in the wash, normal wash, it'll come out. It is That's like so cool. the miracle one all and done. Dawn and Dawn and hydrogen peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide mm -hmm. for like cuts and scrapes. Yeah, it's incredible, right? Because it's also an antibacterial. Yeah. So it really does so many things. And it's, I mean, it takes out red wine stains, blood stain, like you, you name it, if you need something to come out of any sort of fabric, always spot test. I should say that preface always spot test, but it'll come out of anything. I use it on colors. I have no issues with bleaching and it's wonderful. Yeah. And so this was something you learned from your grandma, from grandmother Ruth, yeah. from grandma Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. And so these books, are you going to turn them into actual books? The ones from her? I would love to, I would love to, you know, my dream is to have my own book. I can't, I visualize it. I try to manifest it best I can. I feel like it'll come along when it's ready to be out there. Um, I kind of live my life a lot like that, but yes, I mean, I, I have a vision of having this book of how to make a holistic home and then grandma Ruth being in like the center pages, you know, those books. And there's like the center pages of her story and her little handwritten note cards with everything. So I do keep them in the safe. I'm very protective of those because no one handwrites on, uh, you know, little index cards anymore. Everything's on a computer. So yeah, yeah, a few people do. I mean, yeah, no, no, no. It's not. Yeah. That is not what most are doing anymore. So what is a day like a typical day for someone like you who's also because as you're doing this stuff, you're making content, which means you have to record it and you have to edit it and you have to find the backdrop and you have to put your it's very cohesive on your feed with the cover shot always matching the other cover shot. So like, how does that work? Do you have certain days you create content? Do you create them all day long? Like, how do you do it? Um, I, if you'd asked me last year, I would say I'm just taping all the time. I don't know what I'm doing. Like there was a huge learning curve. Now I have it down to a science. My daughter's in school from nine to noon. And that's like when I crunch it out Monday through Friday. And a lot of it is just what I'm feeling now versus like what's trending. There's a lot of that out on social media. And after I've seen it on four people's posts, I get a little bit bored of it. So I try to just think about like, what am I doing? Like right now I'm in spring break. So you guys are going to be getting travel tips because that's actually what I'm doing. Or you're going to get my sunscreens that I use and things like that. So I try yeah. to take you along more on the life of myself. I do try to batch content, especially if I have a vacation to eliminate the, the burden, so to speak, of content creation. But I love that part. It's one part I will not delegate. I feel like it's kind of my bread and butter. It's my creative outlet now. So I want to yeah. tell you, Jenny, that I am so organized and I have this down to a science. And on my red days, I do this. And on my blue days, I do. But that's not. I go a lot with my gut and how I'm feeling and what people are needing at the time. Yeah, I mean, I I think you're smart to keep your content in your hands. I do. I I often feel like when people delegate too much of their online content, and I don't mean they don't have have all the help you need, editing, whatever, storytelling, but you could just tell when someone's voice is missing. Yes. Your point of view. No, so I that just is always kind of that's I I do much of everything. I mean, I do everything myself, but uh, yeah, I would just feel I, I would have to overlook. I feel like it would all take double the time too, because I'd have to keep going back to look at it again to double check it to make sure it was how I had intended or whatever. And then what's the point of having someone else do it if you're then back in there fixing yeah. and redoing? So I get that. I get it. And yeah. so, yeah, how long does it take you to shoot and edit and post? It depends what I'm doing, but I probably work about, I mean, I work two to three hours a day and then I really spend a lot of time in my DMs. I would say my videos mm -hmm. now take me about an hour to an hour and a half start to finish, like yeah. to post boss probably. 
Um, but I really spend about two hours a day, at least in the beginning of the day before my kids wake up or once they go to bed connecting. It's the community. Right. That's what's so cool and authentic. And, you know, there's digital media and there's all these other types of media, but social media is about the connection. And yeah. I think it's a piece a lot of influencers miss out on. Have you gotten tips from your followers that you've then used as well? Like been like, oh, that's such a good one. I got to share it. I did. And I think I mentioned it. I can't recall off the top of my head, which one it was, but I'll say like, you guys sent this one in. There was another one. I don't know if I ever posted it, but they'll send, um, lady sent me, she's like, this is a great way to not burn yourself on your stainless steel pots and pans. And she put wine corks where the little handle is for the pot lid. And she just, and she, she washes them like that. Cause cork, she's like, it just goes through the dishwasher. I don't even worry about it, but I've never burned my hands and I don't use pot holders. When people say they don't use something that they, that normal people yeah. use to get a job done. I'm fascinated by that. Where so does the cork go? I, that. I don't understand. It just so, so like she takes three wine corks and just puts them under like the lid of the pot, right? You know, the little handle that you'd like pick up to take the pot lid off yeah. your pot. Yeah. And she sticks three corks underneath the handle. So she so just it's picks like, up the cork. Got it. So it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. She made herself an extended handle. I was like, that's right. awfully cool. Vertically. So it looks like a cross. Yeah. So she perpendicular. Huh. Yeah. I know. Fascinating, right? Yeah, that would work. Yeah. I, I use pot so, holders because I, I liked when somebody posted <laughs> um, the wooden spoon on the boiling water. I still don't yeah. understand how that works or why that works. Why does that work? Uh, so it leaches out everything in the wood. So when you're cooking, my, you know, any one that's Italian is like, no, 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 no. That's like the flavor. That's why we use wood, but wood can harbor bacteria and other oils and everything that you're cooking with. And so when you boil something down, it leaches out of the wood, it opens the pores of the wood and will release all that into the water. And then it becomes buoyant, right? Science. So all the oils and all that gunk stuff will float to the top instead of stay leached in your wood. Then when you take it out of the boiling water, your wood is exposed. You put That's not even what I'm talking it. about. No, oh. I'm talking about if you put an upside down wooden spoon across a boiling oh, pot of water, the, <laughs> the water doesn't boil out over the pot. It doesn't, it I stops it from you. boiling over. Okay, you're right. Okay, so that is true. I think it's because if you can put anything, it doesn't have to be wood. It could be oh. a carrot and it would do the same thing. It's just a stopper for the bubble, right? So I use olive oil. I just rim my pot with olive oil and it will never go above that line. It's kind of like breaks the momentum of the boil. That's so cool. It does I work. Even know it does yeah. work. Yeah. So does work. What, is, what is your favorite thing to cook? Mm. I'm a big pasta person. I like love a good carb and you can throw anything in pasta. You can make it all year long. You like, you can't go wrong. Um, but yeah. I also like really fun salads. Like I, I like a salad with no lettuce. Like how do we make this a really fun, yummy, uh, nutrient dense salad yeah. coming into yeah. that season. So what about washing fruits and vegetables? Cause we did just learn about the new dirty dozen and the clean 15 mm. and all that stuff and how we wash our veggies and then I get nervous about the frozen fruit, but like I was told by food scientists that America has some of the uh, cleanest, even with all the stuff, it's a, it's a safest food and, and our frozen stuff that's meant to be eaten straight from being frozen, that that stuff is uh, pretty darn safe. But yeah, how do you, how do you clean your fruits and vegetables? Uh, so berries have very thin skin. So you're going to take them and put them in a salt bath. Basically, you just take any type of salt. I prefer finely ground, uh, iodized, whatever you want to use and, and water. And you just soak the berries in a bowl of salt water for, you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. And then, or five minutes, I think is what I do. Five minutes, soak them in there for five minutes. And kind of agitate them around and you'll be shocked once you strain them at the water um, and it'll take off the pesticides and everything salt is really good abrasive um, and it works really really well and you just rinse but, it and you just rinse it and then you can pop it in your fridge with a little paper towel underneath it in the glass container and it'll i always put them front and center of my fridge because i yeah. want to eat them first 
And, and it then, doesn't make you have salty fruit? No. So that's the thing. It can't penetrate the skin of the berry for five minutes. It's not going to be able to penetrate it. Yeah. So you're not going to have any of that. Where vinegar actually will penetrate the skin on berries. It's too thin. I use vinegar for a lot of other produce, but definitely not my berries. And then for other, most other types of produce, like apples or anything with a waxy substance or grapes, I use baking soda and water okay. and let it set for five minutes to 15 minutes and rinse it out. And it'll remove all the pesticides, dirt, bacteria stuck to the waxy substance on it. And you're good to go. I use baking soda and salt almost over everything else. Vinegar very... I use vinegar very sparingly to clean things. Because that'll produce. for fruits and vegetables. Yeah, because it'll make it taste like vinegar. Yeah, I hate it. And I swear it pickles it sometimes. And I put it yeah. in the fridge and I'm like, what the heck? I can't yeah. take it. And by the way, yeah. I love a good pickle, but that's a different item. Right. Totally different. Yes. Yeah. We can pickle all the things with vinegar, but let's just leave it off our fruits. I'm <laughs> right there with you. And also, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try salt and I'm going to try, um, baking soda. Cause I, so blueberries would be salt. All the berries would be salt. Apples would be baking soda. You and then it. I also rinse, I mean, I rinse the outside of oranges and avocados and stuff because the knife is going to cut through the dirty outside. That's exactly right. You've got it. Right. You've got it down. You're on pineapple too. It. How do you cut a pineapple? I know it's on your page and you guys can follow Nicole at Nicole Jack on Instagram and TikTok, but how do you, how do you do a pineapple? What's your method? Um, well, to make sure that it's ripe, I pluck the top leaf off. And if it kind of comes out, I might pull back a little on you, but if it kind of comes out after you jiggle just for a little bit, you know, like it's ready to go. If you pull it out and it's completely out, that that's gone bad Throw like get it ripe. to the deer yeah. outside. Yeah. 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 So I would, I wash it the same way. I wash it with mm -hmm. salt. Cause it's, that like really weird texture. And I just kind of like cut how they do it in a lot of places. I just kind of cut it into like an octangular shape basically and off the ends. And then I just cut through it. The core is super nutrient dense. A lot of people don't want to eat the core. You should be eating the core. It is full of microbes. It's really good for your gut. So I don't skip the core. I eat the whole pineapple. I just take the tops off, the ends are off and I just take the skin down. But you can chop it I, so many yeah. different ways. You know, you can cut it in half. You can leave the skin on and cut it in the diagonal of its little, um, like honeycomb shapes. And then there's so many ways to cut it. My kids are always like, cut it in a new shape. I'm like, all right, here we go. So nice of you. Not me. I just cut it anyway. <laughs> yeah. I like the core too, though. It's chewy. I I'll eat the core. No one else in my house will, but I will eat the core. It's delicious. Just, I agree. It's just totally. fibrous. It's just, you just have to know what you're going to be, what you're going to be getting. Do you have a favorite cleaning hack you want to share? Like a favorite, because you shared the stain, the do it yourself stain stuff, which sounds great. I'm going to make that hydrogen peroxide and Dawn dish soap. And Dawn, by the way, is safe for animals, which is really nice. I agree. And some people say that there's some toxins in it, but there are times that you actually need. I mean, like the power yeah. of Dawn dish soap to yes. cut down other things. There's truly not like a remarkable replacement that does a good enough job for, we're talking stains. Okay. We're not talking like to wipe your counters down with. I don't use that. Um, my favorite cleaning paste that I use in everything, sinks, door, like you name it, it's in bathtubs. I use it for so many things is Castile soap and baking soda. And I mix it into a little paste and I just, everyone's like, can I save this? Can I keep it? I'm like, just make it the day you're going to use it. You'll okay. learn how much you're going to use, but that scrub will clean legitimately almost anything in your house and impeccably. Like it's a great grout cleaner as well. Castile and it's soap. The, half and yeah. Half. But the liquid you know? Castile soap. Yes. With baking soda? Yeah, the liquid ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I use Dr. Bonner's, but you can use any kind. Because, you know, they make bars of Castile soap, I think, as well. They do. I, I actually grate those down to keep the mosquitoes out of my yard when I host. And it works? Oh, it works. You can grate them down. I use the peppermint one. They don't like peppermint. And I just sprinkle it in the garden kind of around me, and they will not come near you. Like on a porch, you could put it too? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I could put it in little bowls and on a porch, like on tables. Totally. And like it's little... sustainable, right? Because 
Castile soap is all organic, so it's easy. I'm not killing my grass. It doesn't mind that. It. It's fine. Yeah, no, I don't want to kill grass. I don't want to. Nope, nope. No. Yeah. I don't mind killing <laughs> mosquitoes. I know that's probably wrong, but I, like, I'm that person that loves animals but hates insects, and I know that's wrong, but it's true. <laughs> It's true. No, you're not alone. I'm the same way. But yeah, castile soap and baking soda into like a paste and you can yeah. use it on so much. Okay. You gave great ideas here. You gave great, really excellent ideas. I think people are going to love what they just learned in this small amount of time. And so if you want more, go follow Nicole on social media at Nicole Jack. And um, because she's got there's so many tips. There's so many reels. There's so many things that you're going to watch and you're going to like hit yourself in your head. Like, oops, I should have had a V8. You're going to be like, what, how did I not? <laughs> That's so cool. Um, so thank you for being on my podcast. Anything else you want to promote? No, no, that's it. I just had such I have the best time chatting with you. Thank you. You have great energy and I love you're funny and I love a good smile and a good laugh. So thank you for all you do. I am at just Jenny Hutt on Instagram, at Jenny Hutt on TikTok and Twitter. Any questions or comments about today's episode, you could email justjennypod at gmail.com. And I'll be back here per usual tomorrow.